Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video for Unity, I wanted to explain to you guys all of the UI components, how they interact together, and what each of them are used for. So when I'm talking about UI components inside of Unity, I'm of course referring to, if you were to right click, and go down here to UI, all of the different game objects you can create that are for building your in-game UI that's separate from the actual actors, the player, the enemies, all of that but rather the stuff that displays on screen like a GUI interface. Another way you can create these UI components in any other game object is to go up to the game object menu and then you would choose UI and you'd have pretty much the same options available here. So for this video at least we're going to be sticking to the default UI components for Unity and not covering any uh, thing from an add-on like Text Mesh Pro. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it anyway. So the first item I have in this game hierarchy created already is the canvas. The canvas is the base UI component because everything else that's a UI component like a button or an image, at least an image that's for your UI, needs to be added on top of the canvas. The canvas is going to be where your UI renders. So the important thing to know about the canvas UI component is that it's where all of the other UI components go on top of. Now the canvas itself doesn't really do much. It has a couple things on it, such as the graphic rate caster, which allows uh, things like mouse clicks to interact with UI components. But every other UI component needs to be added onto this as a base. So next up is panels. And panels are basically boxes that you can add extra stuff under. You can add any game object as a child to another game object. You can see here that buttons have text components by default as a child. Um, but the panel basically provides you with an image that by default is this kind of boring gray. But you can change that to any other kind of pattern or image that you want as the panel background. And then what you generally do is you add extra components like a text box for a title onto that panel. And your panel would then become a menu object. So one thing I like to do is if I have buttons or key bindings that would open up a game menu, I would actually specifically be targeting the panel itself. Because if you um, set a panel or basically a parent game object to active or not active, you can show or hide everything beneath it all at once. So panels tend to be a good object to rename to a menu and then just stick everything else that is contained in that menu beneath it. Okay, so next up is the text box. So this is for displaying text, not for entering text like an import field. Um, with a text box, you can add in whatever text you want it to display, including hitting enter when you want a new line. Now you'll notice that by default, um, you may have text that does not properly display on that text box. And that may be due to your vertical overflow setting. Uh, where it's truncate, it's going to just not show the text that can't fit in the box. But if you do overflow, um, then it will just go over the line and show anyway. You can also change the font size if you want to resize everything, um, align it to the center, both horizontally and vertically, and of course, changing the color of the text located inside of it. So generally you'll use text elements for things like titles or labels for other items such as an input box. Uh, but just know that it's only for display. You can change what it says in script, but you will never get user input directly on a text UI component. So next up is an image component. Whenever you need to display an image on your UI, something like a logo or any graphics that you need to pop up there, uh, you can just pop in a image UI component, which will have an image script. You might notice that the panel also has an image script, but its defaults are different. This is more for backgrounds. And the image is set up with the expectation that it's more like uh, just a general graphic you put on and not a box to contain everything. So when you have the image script attached to a game object, it's gonna be sprites located inside of the script. So my understanding of the difference between an image and a raw image here is that images will take the image and display it as a sprite, which gives it some extra functionality, being generally better for things like animating it and being easy to work with. Uh, but then a raw image is a little bit faster because it doesn't have the extra overhead of all that sprite functionality. So raw images can be used for stuff like basic textures when you don't need to animate it or anything of that nature. 
but honestly you could probably just get away with making everything an image unless performance really matters to you though you can probably get away with just using image components in all cases really i haven't run into any situation yet where using images which might display it as a sprite has actually slowed everything down enough to be noticeable um okay so next up is button and you'll be using buttons a lot because buttons allow you to attach a on script event delegate down here so basically you can drag any object that has a script into here and then you can run one of the functions on that object and then you can run one of the functions from that game object or the script attached to it. And basically what that'll mean is when the button is clicked, it's going to run all of these functions that are listed below. And you can, of course, have multiple functions. So buttons are really useful. When you want to do something like enter a new menu, you can use a button to do that. And then you just enable the menu by game object set active. Uh, but really, as long as you can reference a game object that has a script attached to it, you can basically make the on-click events do whatever you want. Uh, you could also have buttons on screen for mobile games for things like attacking enemies or, or making an in-game purchase, whether that's for the cash shop or part of the game itself. So buttons are super useful. And as for the text that's displaying there, uh, buttons always come default with a uh, text component as a child. It's not mandatory. You can just delete it like that if you want. Um, but the text basically to title the button and let players know what that's going to be about. Um, just as easily though, you could replace it with an image on top of it as well. Uh, basically whatever floats your boat. Okay, so next is the toggle component. This is where you have basically a true, false, yes, no uh, question or option. And you want them to be able to toggle or switch between those two options, basically on or off. So if you have a Boolean value or you want to control a Boolean value in script, this is really useful. So it might be like enable music and then you would use a toggle. Um, because you just want it to be an on or off situation. Now you can see here as child elements, they've got an image component down here and another image for the check mark. Um, and also the label, which is just a text component to label the button. So it's basically four components built into one, but using the toggle can make it a little bit more straightforward. And uh, whenever you want the toggle to change something, whenever you hit the check box, uh, on value changed works very similar to on click just instead of when the button is clicked it's whenever this checkbox is marked so next we have drop downs which are for drop down menus so the idea of the drop down menus is that it will allow the user or the player in this case to um, choose from a few different options so when you drop this down it's going to expand this template area uh, filled in with a white background by default and you'll be able to make a selection there uh, you'll also notice that there's a on value changed event here so when the user selects a different option you can have it invoke some methods down here on different game objects so this can be really useful when you want to give the user a series of options and basically let them choose one out of many input field is kind of similar to text in the the input field box is going to allow the player to basically enter in some text here uh, whatever the purpose for that is a really common example would be if you need to get the player name or a save file name have them enter that in here and then maybe you'd have a button on the side so that you could submit that and then it would take the value inside of the input field of, of course you have to reference these in script uh, but it would take the value and you could save it or you could start a new game with that value. You'll notice that there's some placeholder text in there, but as soon as the player starts typing in the box, that text goes away and then the real text would start being entered. So another cool component that's a little bit more complicated is the scroll view. You can notice in the scroll view, I have uh, two pieces of content here, uh, which is uh, actually the same two images from over here, but you'll notice that the scroll view, I've set its width and height to not be big enough to actually fit all of those, but yet it has both of those inside of there. And you'll notice that the, this uh, vertical scroll bar updates to reflect that you can scroll up or down, of course, when you hit play and actually try the game out. Uh, there's also the option of having a horizontal scroll bar. You can enable or disable these with these check boxes over here. So the general idea of the scroll view is if you want to add content, you would go to scroll view viewport content. And uh, I think it's better practice to actually put it as a child object of the content. And then these images become a child of that. 
Um, so now if we hit play, which we'll do in a second here, we'll be able to scroll up or down and view the different objects that are contained in there. No matter how much stuff we put in there, we'll be able to scroll through all of it as long as the um, corresponding scroll bar is enabled and still there as these child game objects. You can see scroll bar horizontal and scroll bar vertical. You can of course change everything. So if you don't like the uh, white scroller or the background for that, that's all changeable. You just change the image or the color for it. So let's go ahead and hit play and uh, just kind of try out some of these components over here. Okay, so just to demonstrate, you can see the text element is not interactable with by default. Um, you can click on it all day, but it doesn't do anything. Same with images, uh, but images are actually attached as part of the component for a button. So buttons actually have a little UI image here, and you can of course change the button to be something like the Unity logo if you choose. Um, but you can click on the button all day. It won't do anything until you actually add it on click event here, but you can see that you can interact with it. So the toggle, you can interact with that of course. It's on off, so it's either true or false, and you can take that Boolean value and use it in your script. The drop down menus, you can see uh, it gives you a little checkbox for the selected option and uh, we can go down to different options here. The input box, uh, you click on it or press on it depending on what device you're on and you can import the text. Uh, if you're on Android or iOS, of course, it would present you with the uh, keyboard. So let's just type something in. And of course, you probably wanna use this in combination with a button or something so that you can submit. Uh, really all of these would work really well with a button so that you get these uh, import fields filled out by the player and then you hit the button which might say run a save script and then all this information gets saved somewhere in your game so that you can use it and you can see with the scroll bar over here we can scroll to see the two images if we had images that were going wide horizontally rather than tall vertically you would also see a horizontal scroll bar here which would allow you to scroll left and right as well so that's all there is to the default UI components, uh, as you can see, they're individually pretty simple for the most part, but where it becomes powerful is when you start combining them and you build out your own menus um, using combinations like input text, drop downs and toggles, and then you complete it with a button. But maybe you also throw some images on the side uh, to give your menu a little bit of a nicer look. So that's going to be it for all of the default components inside of Unity. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.